Ladies and gentlemen, the future of conflict is likely to be shaped by a range of factors, including advances in technology, changes in geopolitical dynamics, and evolving social and economic trends. The conflicts are not going to be purely conventional. They're going to be hybrid. In other words, a mix of kinetic and non-kinetic warfare. As always, military forces will need to draw on lessons from the past to form their tactics and strategies. The third decade of the 21st century is providing insights into the nature of modern conflict and how military forces can adapt to new challenges. Some potential trends and lessons from the third decade of the 21st century that could shape future conflicts include asymmetric warfare, Weaker actors use con unconventional tactics and strategies to overcome stronger adversaries. Advancements in technology, including remotely piloted aircraft, will continue to transform the nature of warfare. These systems could be used to conduct precision strikes and intelligence gathering, reducing the need for human soldiers in some scenarios. Military forces adapt to these new technologies and develop new tactics and strategies to counter emerging threats. Future conflict will likely involve operations across multiple domains, including land, sea, air, space, and cyberspace. Military forces will need to be able to operate in these domains seamlessly and coordinate their actions to achieve mission objectives. The ability of a 20th century military to fight a 21st century war is certainly the question. The military strategies, tactics, technologies used in the 20th century may not be sufficient to address the complex challenges and threats of modern warfare. The technologies have the potential, like those of the remotely piloted aircraft, to radically alter the battlefield and require new approaches to warfare. Technological innovations, trusted supply chains, and improvisation in the presence of an enemy are all important factors for military forces to consider in modern conflicts. To achieve this, the military forces may need to prioritize training and education that emphasizes flexibility, creativity, and the ability to think outside the box. Effective communication and collaboration between different units and branches of the military will also be critical, as it allows forces to adapt and respond quickly to changing circumstances. Overall, technological innovations, trusted supply chains, and improvisation in the presence of an enemy are all critical factors that military forces consider in modern conflicts. I believe while these technological advancements have transformed warfare, Generals and admirals play a very critical role in modern conflict. Despite advances in technology, war remains a complex and dynamic endeavor that requires human intelligence and decision making. Top military leaders are trained to analyze complex situations and make strategic decisions based on their experience, knowledge, and intuition. Military leadership plays a vital role in inspiring and motivating troops, as well as build trust and cohesion within their units. So therefore, the military leadership are responsible for setting the tone and direction, and their leadership can have a profound impact on the outcome of any conflict. While black box algorithms and other technological tools can certainly provide valuable insights and enhance decision-making, they simply cannot replace the judgment and experience of human leaders. I would like to conclude these initial comments by stressing deterrence against aggression in, for example, the Indian Ocean Maritime Region requires persistent intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance collected from space, airborne, and surface assets. Persistent airborne surveillance of the maritime domain is the most cost-effective near-term option for Quad members to strengthen this deterrence. Given the massive surface area in question, 
Long endurance and crude airborne systems are optimized for providing the necessary persistence. Given su sufficient collection assets, I would like to suggest the Quad can establish a mechanism for real-time sensor data sharing in order to create a common operating picture for each of its members. Today, continued advances in technologies and are pushing the envelope in terms of performance and propelling various types of platforms and vehicles into a greater variety of missions and applications for being true force multipliers. I think you're about to listen to a very interesting discussion and I appreciate your attention. Thank you.